Welcome back everybody, stretching for plantar fasciitis. What do you do in the gym when you have all the tools available at your disposal? You come out here to the tennis court, right? That's not what we did. We, we were in the gym and, uh, and it was too noisy. We took some equipment out and we came out to the tennis court, right? So we got two five pound plates we're laying out on the court. We have a super band that we attach to a post and we're gonna do some band distracted ankle mobilizations, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is knee break ankle moves. And the way I'm gonna set up is I'm gonna step my foot into the band Get this band wrapped around um, right next to your foot, right, right on your ankle. So it's kind of on the ankle bone, maybe a little lower. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up. I'm going to walk my foot out as far as I can so that the ball of my foot is on the plate. If I can't get out too far, just scoot the plate in towards you, right? So I'm going to set both feet up on the plate. The weight's going to be on my heels. I'm going to kind of set my torso forward so I can balance. Right, and then I'm just gonna keep my heel on the ground and the band's actually helping pull my heel back into the floor. Uh, and then I'm gonna drive my knee over my toe as much as I can. And then all the way back till my legs are straight. Right, so I'm gonna bend my knees over my toes, come back till my knees are straight while that band is forcing my foot back. Right, these stresses kind of help you clear impingements, right? So impingements when things get caught like on ligaments and um, and you get this kind of pinching in the front of your ankle. So I have my heels on the ground, screwing my knees forward, and a little out toward the pinky toe side of my foot. I'm leaning in, coming all the way back. Right, we could work this stretch for about a minute, minute and a half. Right, come out, take your foot out, kind of retest, kind of just move through that range of motion, see if you created more room, if you feel more uh, length in the back of that ankle, okay? Uh, next, we're gonna get into another band distracted stretch. I'm gonna clean this stuff up, move it to the side, right? Step into the band, put it around the ankle. We're gonna take a big step forward, try to scoot inch yourself forward as much as you can manage, okay? Drop my back knee to the floor. I'm gonna bring my hands down onto the ground. So I'm in the Spider-Man archetype position here. I'm gonna put my hand on my foot, and I'm going to screw my knee forward. Once again, trying to keep my heel against the ground. If you can't, you can even take your opposite hand and hold your heel, right? And then scour your knee forward toward the pinky toe side of the foot, okay, if you can. For me, I can just keep one hand here and really be conscious of keeping my heel down. All right, so pulse that knee forward. And then kind of move in and out, right? Hit all corners there. Move in and out, and once you feel an area of tightness, or you know, time where you want to, uh, a place where you want to spend more time, just hang out. Let that band pull you back. Keep that heel against the ground. Allow yourself to stretch. Try to relax in this position, right? Take some deep breaths. Once again, this is a three, a three to five minute stretch here, right? So put your timer on. Hang out for a little while. Talk to your friend. Whatever you got to do. Just relax and and breathe. Okay. Don't rush this one. Okay, so once I'm done there, I'll switch legs, okay? Um, and then I'll come up and I'll just retest. I'll just see how I feel. Come down, do a few squats. See if you feel more open, more room. Uh, a lot of people with plantar fasciitis, so why, why are we doing this in the first place, right? A lot of people with plantar fasciitis, they get shin splints and they have an inability to get their, their knee over their toe without impinging on something or without getting really tight in the front of their shin. We want to be able to have good dorsiflexion. When, you're, this, um, when you have good dorsiflexion, chances are you're reducing your, light, your likeliness of ever developing plantar fasciitis or having plantar fasciitis. We need good ankle mobility, good dorsiflexion, and all these stretches that we just did are going to help improve dorsiflexion. So thanks for checking in. Um, so stay tuned for our activations. Getting into our activations and strength drills now for plantar fasciitis. We want to work on keeping a nice stable arch Keep that arch lifted off the ground. Keep the heel planted. Make sure the uh, balls of the foot are on the ground. But try to stay a little lifted in the arch of the foot, right? I got my mini band here, right? So I'm gonna put it around the arches of my foot. I'm gonna get my feet wide, right? About a little wider than hip width apart. And we're really, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get the ten build tension up here in the glute mid, up high in the hip complex, while maintaining a stable arch. So if, our, if the muscles in our upper hip complex are strong, they're gonna take some, uh, some responsibility away from the muscles in our lower half, right? So we wanna keep them nice and strong and stable. What we're doing is make sure our feet are turned straight, 
holding a nice arch, and we're gonna walk, mini band walk out, and when I walk back in, I'm making sure that the tension stays on the band. The tension will not come off. I won't have this loose band and then walk out again then, right? So we're gonna keep nice and tight here. I'm gonna walk out three, four inches, and then come back, keeping that band tight. So I'm walking out and I'm resisting with this leg and stopping while the band's still tense, okay? We're gonna get about 10 walks out, 10 walks back. Make sure the torso upper and uh, the whole back, the whole spine's nice and flat and neutral, right? If you haven't tucked your tailbone, tuck your tailbone there. You should feel this exercise all here in the glute mid and, and, and glute max kind of hip complex here in the side. Okay, so walk 10 out, 10 back. All right, second activation we're gonna do um, is we're gonna put, we're gonna wrap this band above the knees, about one inch above both knees, right? Keep your feet about shoulder width apart. <clears throat> right, this is gonna challenge your arch a little more because we're trying to, if we let the band pull you, you're gonna go into pronation, right? So we're gonna stay screwed out and notice I, kind of like we were talking about in the first video, okay? Um, that I'm gonna keep the ball of my foot and big toe on the ground and I'm gonna try to external, stay externally rotated in my hips and knees, right? So my feet are staying straight, I'm staying externally rotated in my hips and knees, but I'm keeping my arch with my big toe on the ground, right? I'm gonna hold out, and what I'm gonna do is with one leg, I, you know, start with your right side, let your knee, let your band just pull in on the right knee side, keep the left arch strong, right? So left knee's externally rotated, left arch strong, right knee just let, gives in for a second, and then we screw it back out. Hold that nice strong arch, let the right knee collapse in, come back out, hold two Mississippi seconds, back in, back out, two Mississippi, Right, we're gonna go 10 per side. Now I'm gonna hold the right side strong and go left and back out to Mississippi, right back in the whole time working on my arch strength and stability. Um, if you're doing that right, you're gonna feel that in the same area up in the glute and the hip complex. Just to sh And it's a good uh, testament to show you how important that hip stability is even when it comes to arch support. Thanks for checking in. Do your activations, report back. Post in the comment section below if you want to see anything more from us. This is Force of Fitness, Performance Library, and 3v3 Tennis. Check us out next time.